We'll make a, a recording and the slides available um, on the Pearson Music Community page um, over the next couple of days as well. Um, the other thing to uh, sort of realize is that uh, we are operating over the internet um, and this can cause a few connection problems here and there. Um, if you do have any connection issues with uh, the audio or images, the first thing to do is uh, just to log out um, and then log back into the session. Um, that usually fixes things as well. So hopefully um, we won't have any problems like that um, as we go through. Um, there, as I said, there are slides and uh, I'll be going through those in a second. Um, if you do have any questions um, as we go along, um, there is the chat box um, function uh, where you should be able to type any questions into there um, and um, ask uh, any questions that you need. Um, there should be time at the end to go through all of that. Um, and I'll pause at different points um, in the session uh, to try and go through any questions that come in as well as we go through. Um, so uh, what we'll do, we'll get underway. Um, so just have a look at the agenda. Um, so I'll give a brief update on um, the performance measures um, as it currently stands. Um, we can have a look at the structure um, and the comparison of the structure between the tech award and the first award. Um, then look at the mapping of content um, between the first award moving across to the tech award. Uh, have a look at some of the uh, new content that's built in into the tech award. Um, and then have a look at the differences um, between the assessment and awarding of the qualification as well. So um, DfE issued uh, new requirements for Key Stage 4 performance measures for 2024. Um, and that required some significant changes, uh, specifically more about how internal assessment actually worked for um, these uh, tech award qualifications. Um, so the decision was made that the uh, BTEC Tech Award in Music Practice uh, that had been uh, developed uh, for the uh, 2018, I want to say, um, uh, was uh, chosen to move forward to be redeveloped um, because it more closely matched the overall requirement um, for the new um, ones issued by DFE. Um, in order to redevelop the, what was the first award to meet these new requirements would have meant changing it completely and it wouldn't look anything like that current sort of first award um, as it is now. Um, so the BTEC Tech Award in Music Practice um, for 2022 first teaching has been included on the 2024 Key Stage 4 performance measures in England. So you can confidently deliver that um, from September 2022 and it will count for your learners um, to the 2024 performance measures. The BTEC First Award in Music um, is included on Key Stage 4 performance measures in England up to 2023. So that means that your last cohort to go through the qualification and for it to count on Key Stage 4 performance measures in England will be your current year 10 cohort. So any new learners that are coming in in September um, on a two year program and will complete year 11 um, in 2024 um, must be on the new redeveloped BTEC Tech Award in music practice. Um, Okay, don't think there's any questions coming in at that point. Um, hopefully that's all clear. Um, and so we'll move on. 
So obviously, um, BTEC first ward in music, um, you had your two core units and two uh, optional units to uh, choose from. Um, that has changed in terms of the tech award. There are three mandatory components. Um, however, there is some flexibility in terms of the approach through those components, what you can cover in terms of skills as well. So um, we could talk about that a little bit later on um, in a session as well. Um, because it's understood that the first award was used in a few different ways um, for, by centres. There were many centres that chose to do things like performing and composition as the optional uh, units to make it um, but, uh, more sort of, I suppose, a, a vocational similar content to a GCSE. Um, and then there were the other centres that quite often chose a more technology route down it. So using the recording and sequencing options quite often as well. So um, with the Tech Award in Music Practice, um, you do have both strands through there in terms of um, more focus on performing or more focus on production skills, um, depending on the learners that you have. Um, and so there is some flexibility in there as well. So the three components in the Tech Award um, are um, exploring music products and styles, music skills development, and then the external assessment um, is task based, uh, which is responding to commercial music brief. So in terms of content mapping, um, I did um, a little while ago a an well, an Excel document uh, that went through the learning aims of the first award um, as the content and then went through uh, the uh, learning outcomes of uh, the new Read About Tech Award um, and match these up to see where um, this content matched up and you could map across your teaching and learning um, for that as well. So obviously um, music industry um, was the exam um, on the first award. Um, and on the tech award, there's no specific content around um, the music industry uh, as it was in that in the first award, although there needs to be some understanding of the jobs and the wider industry um, in component two when they're thinking about their skills and developing their skills and um, sharing material and things like that. Um, a lot of unit two, um, the managing uh, music product content, does map across quite clearly to the external assessment um, because uh, there's things around understanding um, a music brief, um, selecting and applying skills uh, to respond to that brief and then presenting the final music product. So that obviously fits into the plan, develop and deliver content um, around that unit two. Um, the promotion side of things, again, not specifically mapped across, um, but in uh, component two, there is teaching content around um, your professional and commercial skills in the industry and having that knowledge of promoting yourself as a musician um, is built into that side of things as well. Um, and then the review, the management of the product that was in there for uh, unit two, um, there is a uh, an outcome around the commenting on the creative process of the music brief um, as part of the external assessment in there as well. So a lot of the knowledge and skills that you would have done through the teaching of unit two do map across to the, the skills and knowledge required um, to respond to that music brief as well. Um, for unit three, the introducing live sound, uh, there were some centres uh, that delivered this. Um, this was not so much in schools as such. Um, this was more, I think, uh, used in further education colleges on some of the larger sizes of, of the BTEC first more. Um, so 
this wasn't mapped across um, and there are reasons for that, which I'll go into in a, a little while as well, um, a little more. Um, whereas unit four, again, there's quite clear mapping across of the, the skills and the content and the learning aims of uh, that were included in unit four. So the explore, creative stimuli to meet a brief, um, obviously um, fit into component one there, applying understanding of the use of the techniques to create music. Um, in component two, there's applied, develop, uh, applied development processes for music skills and techniques. And then in component three, there is the select and apply music skills in response to a music brief. So all of those things in terms of the teaching and content um, fit into that as well. Um, in component two, um, learners are developing their skills and working towards a, a musical outcome as well. So again, that develop, extend and shape music um, for performances um, in there that's under the uh, composition is um, under some of those skills that are developed there in component two as well. And then I suppose the present compositions appropriately, um, again, not specifically mapped across about presenting material clearly um, in there, but uh, as I mentioned in, in that component two, there's some uh, information about sharing material and um, promoting yourself. Um, and that maps across into that, uh, the demonstrate professional and commercial skills in the music industry. Um, lots of unit five uh, map across as well um, in terms of developing the performance skills and using music performance skills in rehearsal and performance. Um, in the skills development uh, uh, component in the tech award, um, obviously there's the applying development processes for music skills and techniques. Um, and also, um, you know, a, the performance skills in rehearsal and performance come into component two in that learning aim as well, as well as potentially to use performance skills in component three when they're applying those music skills in response to the brief. Um, music recording, um, again, can be uh, used quite extensively throughout this in terms of the um, music uh, skills and uh, in component three in response to the brief as they're planning um, their response to the brief and recording material, um, depending on what option they go down um, in for that response to a brief. Um, and uh, also in component one, um, one of the um, music products that they respond to is could be an audio recording where they act as a sound engineer to that. And they, again, in component two, they could be developing their production skills um, in there as well to um, uh, develop their recording skills and working on a door. Um, so that's a possibility as well. And then finally, uh, the unit seven uh, music sequencing, again, is present and, and the teaching and learning content it can be spread across and mapped across to um, each of the components um, because of the developing of the techniques and skills that happen throughout the course um, in there. So again, it's about applying the understanding of the use of techniques to create music um, and are developing their music skills and techniques in component two, and then applying those skills in component three as well. There is some new content um, that doesn't map across um, from the tech award uh, from the first award into the tech award. Um, and that is mainly in component one, um, where learners do need to demonstrate an understanding of styles of music. Um, so they would have to uh, have a knowledge of different styles of music and be able to explain the techniques, styles and musical elements involved with those across performing, creating and production um, in the examples that they're using um, in their assessment evidence for that as well. So there's a little bit of new content that builds into um, the Tech Award.
Um, so a little bit more of an explanation of why certain things are included and and not, I suppose. Um, so the focus of the Tech Award um, was to develop music skills and understanding. Um, and if we introduced content around the music industry in the teaching and learning at any point, it would have been necessary because of the synoptic assessment um, element of that component three um, in the external assessment to include music industry content in there as well. And that just didn't fit with the task based approach um, that uh, were, was developed for um, that external assessment. Um, to note, there is obviously music industry content on the level three qualifications. Um, and also, as I previously mentioned there, you know, although it's not assessed, um, the teaching content around the music industry can be linked to the professional skills development in component two, um, and obviously how they're responding to the brief and understanding the brief um, in component three as well. Um, I did a, a quick uh, mapping document of um, unit two as well, breaking it down into the types of tasks and uh, skills that they would cover um, in uh, the managing music products uh, assessments that you would have done um, and thought about the, the skills and things that they would um, incorporate into their planning for the external assessment as well. And all of those things, as you can see, map across um, exactly there. So they've got to think about a target audience um, because the brief gives a scenario. So they've got to think of appropriate material um, when they're responding to that brief in component three. Um, got to have their artistic intention and understanding of that. And they are working in time constraints because there is a supervised um, window um, in there. Um, for that as well. Uh, someone's just asked a question. Uh, and I think I did just sort of talk about that in there about the a question uh, if music industry is still, still being assessed at level three, uh, why has the decision been taken to take it out at level two? Um, it seems a bit odd in terms of progression. I've taught the level three unit and we use loads from the old level two unit. Um, so yeah, as uh, kind of mentioned, it it would have made a very strange assessment um, to try and fit some music industry um, assessment into the task based approach that um, were, was created for the tech award, uh, the very practical task that it is. Um, now, it's not to say that that teaching and learning content isn't relevant um, to the level two. Um, it is. Um, and having that understanding of the professional context and um, the industry when they're thinking about their professional skills and skills development, um, it can be built into that, although it's not directly assessed. Um, However, the level three does have a different purpose um, to level two. Um, so I would say that the industry skills that are built into um, that uh, level three course are there in terms of that specification at the moment and, and will stay. When it comes to redevelopment of the level three, um, who knows what the new requirements will be around from DFE for those. Um, and uh, we have to see if it's still appropriate um, to include that in there. Um, but uh, think about the purpose of level three and the progression routes from that. Um, it's more likely to stay uh, in the level three. Um, OK, uh, and then just carrying on look, looking at those skills mapping across there for um, component three. Um, as they're working their way through the task, um, there's a research stage um, in that. Um, 
in terms of uh, thinking about what they need to do for the task and developing their material. Um, as they're working through creating their response to the brief, see they're monitoring their progress on the work and thinking about their timekeeping skills. Um, and then at the end in, in the review, um, you've got uh, this sort of critical review of their strengths and weaknesses in the process and, and their effectiveness of, of their planning and, and as they work through that task as well. So lots of that content and, and the way the, the approach to that task um, would have happened in unit two does map across um, quite well into um, that external assessment for component three there. Um, as mentioned, the live sound, again, it wasn't possible to include that into the new specification. Again, it would have needed uh, to be included in that component three external assessment, which again, just wasn't practical for the type of task that um, the, the responding to a, a commercial brief is in there. Um, unit four, Again, the starting points um, that you're probably very used to um, in that uh, unit four um, does map quite well across to the learning outcome B in component one, where there's um, uh, some initial responses to music products. Um, so uh, learners can create um, uh, there's original song or composition and music for media as options as the music products where they can respond to and it, we're not looking for complete pieces we're looking for like 30 to 60 second examples um, at that point um, in in component one um, so those starting points and those little developed uh, ideas that happen um, in uh, unit four can certainly feed into that sort of assessment uh, and the evidence uh, for uh, component one there as well. And then developing their skills and shaping music, um, again, feeds into their skills development for component two, because in component two, they need to develop skills across two out of three disciplines of performing, creating and production. Um, and uh, obviously that leads very well into developing skills for creating um, and they are going to demonstrate how they would develop their skills and extend ideas and work towards uh, a musical outcome um, for uh, in that uh, component as well. Again, uh, unit five uh, already talked about that there's lots of uh, things mapped across from that um, in terms of initial practice um, that uh, would happen in the music performance there, could form part of the examples um, that are used for the styles and techniques uh, for component one. Um, again, extended extracts uh, could be used as a, a response to the music products um, because a live performance um, is one of the music products listed there. Um, so they could perform like a verse and a chorus from, from a piece there um, for that learning outcome B. Um, and then performance tasks and rehearsals as they're developing their skills for component two uh, could feed into that as well. In terms of recording, again, some basic recording examples could be used um, in learning outcome A in component one, and then some extended ideas for uh, learning outcome B. And then again, their skills development uh, would work and fit into that component too. So lots of the uh, the introducing optional units from the BTEC first um, do very much fit into the um, component two skills development um, that's in there um, in uh, the tech award. And then finally, unit seven, the uh, music sequencing. Again, um, basic sequencing ideas can be used um, in component one, the learning outcome A. And again, extending those uh, extracts um, 
in response to the music uh, products that could be used uh, in learning outcome B. And then again, developing sequencing tasks uh, can be used to develop production skills um, in component two as well. As I said, there is uh, new content, particularly in component one around the exploration of styles, um, understanding the techniques in those different styles across performing, composing, um, and production as well. And um, there's more of a, a, a kind of emphasis on portfolio of work, so creating uh, material um, as uh, the, the task moves along as well. Um, and there is also a bit of an under, needed understanding of music theory and how this impacts on the decision uh, Create, of creating music, um, so they are commenting on that um, a little bit as well. Um, so someone is just asking, uh, in component one, learning aim A, uh, state explore five different musical styles uh, on page 10 of the spec, whereas the assignment says a portfolio of four different styles, page 12 of the spec, which is it? Um, so it's actually both because uh, page 10 of the spec is talking about the teaching and learning content. So uh, you are going to deliver um, the teaching and learning around at least five different styles. Um, potentially you could do more as well um, from uh, those uh, the solid bullet points sort of eras and styles uh, that are listed in the spec but for the assessment um, so their assessment evidence only needs to show evidence of the understanding of four different styles so that's why there's the two different numbers um, because obviously in terms of the teaching learning and understanding that gives them a, a bit of a choice in terms of examples that they could choose from as they move into the assessment stage. But also in terms of the styles and understanding as they move into component three, um, having a, a broader range of knowledge of different styles can help them in their response to component three as well. Um, so, yeah, the that's why there's that difference. Um, just to pause at this point and talk about um, component three um, a little bit. Um, as I said, having that broader understanding of different styles um, is, is important uh, um, to some extent because the brief that gets released for component three has an option, has options in terms of the pathway through it um, to choose a creating and performing route or a creating and production route. Um, so learners can have that choice depending on their speciality, how they respond to the brief. But the brief will always give a list of four different styles and a list of 10 different pieces of music. Now, what a learner needs to do is choose one of the pieces of music list, uh, listed and rework it into one of the four styles listed. So as they, you know, the four styles that are listed in that um, uh, choice could be, you know, from any of the different eras in there, um, having that broader knowledge would give them that understanding and uh, be able to respond to that brief in a more meaningful manner straight away rather than having to go off and research that style a bit more at that point. Um, so the idea is hopefully by that point they've had an experience of lots of different styles of music um, and be able to um, choose a style out of the four given um, that is meaningful to them as well. So. Uh, that's a, a kind of good point to, to make there as well. So uh, moving on to the differences in assessment. Um, this is mainly um, 
talking about internal assessment as well, although there are a few differences about the external assessment. Um, so most of these changes. Uh, oh, someone's asked, are the stars the same each year? So no, the stars would change uh, each year in the brief. Um, but there will be a, a range of styles from uh, you know, the eras listed in the spec. Um, so you will generally get some pop music styles in there um, and some from the other uh, styles and uh, genres that are listed um, in that spec um, in the other areas as well. Um, so the yeah, the differences in assessment internally were mainly driven by the changes of requirements from DFE. Um, so um, one of the requirements was that for internally assessed components, uh, the brief uh, had to be released by the awarding, awarding organization. Um, so you won't be writing assignment briefs um, anymore. Um, we will be uh, writing those for you and releasing them. Um, and for each internally assessed component, there will be two assessment windows per academic year. So there will be a December, January sort of submission time for the internal assessment, and there will be a May, June time for the internal assessments. Um, and you can choose when you assess those components. Um, so we will release briefs. Um, it's looking like the December, January period uh, would have a brief released in October um, and the May, June series would have briefs released in February. So you've got time to go through the teaching and learning content before the brief is released. And then you have time for the assessment period um, before you submit the work um, in there. Now, again, another change uh, to internal assessment was a move away from the criterion graded um, route for internal assessment to a mark based and moderated approach um, to uh, internally assessed components. So there are now marking grids um, with ranges of marks um, and descriptors in there. Um, that you will use to mark the work. Um, that will then be submitted, a sample will be submitted for moderation. Um, and moderation will work slightly differently to some, how some of you may be familiar with like moderation for GCSE music, um, where um, for the Tech Award, you will be able to submit your marks um, and then the work. It will go off to a moderator. They will look at it and if they see uh, a problem with the marking, if they feel that it's been a bit generous, they can come back to you at that point and say, do you want to make changes to the marks here? Um, so you're not waiting around until the results day for that series to find out that your marks have been changed by the moderator. So you it's happening up front and you're made aware of things um, and and have that opportunity to have that uh, there. Um, just having a look at a couple of the questions coming in as well. Um, would you advise components one and two be taught and assessed in year one and component three in year two? Um, I would suggest that, um, well, there is uh, some Schemes of work and uh, delivery guides coming soon. Um, that is all being produced. Um, thinking about the guided learning hours and the structure, it could be more likely that you uh, deliver a lot of the content for component one and then work towards maybe the assessment um, for that in the May June series in uh, the first year. You may then as you're working towards that May June series, start delivering content of the component two um, to then potentially 
uh, do complete that in the December January series when they were moved into year 11. And then you've got the rest of that time um, as you move towards the May June series in the year 11 to work towards uh, component three. Um, that's just a suggestion. Um, but uh, thinking about the guided learning as and how it could be delivered, that that is an option. There are obviously other ways to, to do that. You could potentially work towards uh, having one and two work alongside each other and work towards both of those happening in the summer. It do also depends on your teaching hours um, in those years as well. Um, in terms of moderation, will it still be four learners or more? Um, I think uh, from my knowledge of the moderation process, it will move more in line to the number of um, that you'd see at GCSE. So it'd be like a 10 in your cohort, depending on your size of cohort um, for, for the moderation process. Um, but there are other changes in terms of that. Um, there would still be you set your internal deadline for that um, and thinking about when the deadline would be for this submission for moderation um, and you can still allow so a resubmission opportunity for learners in there so you can click the work in mark it um, you can then allow if you want uh, that resubmission opportunity before it gets submitted for moderation but once it gets submitted for moderation, um, that is then submitted um, and the work would then be moderated. Um, I've seen another question come in. Uh, so with assessing, I was still doing internal verification and resubmissions. Uh, do they also get an option to reset a component if it wasn't the right grade for them? OK, so. Um, there is no requirement to carry out internal verification of your assessment decisions. Uh, unless there are multiple assessors, then you would carry out standardization um, and that's required. Um, but there, because of the moderation process, there's no need um, to carry out that internal verification of your assessment decisions. Um, you're not setting assignment briefs, so there's no IV of assignment briefs either. And there's also no need for an assessment plan. Coming back to uh, your question there about resits, it is possible for a learner to then have a resit opportunity um, for an internal component after the results. Um, they, they are allowed one resit opportunity for each internally assessed component, um, but that would be to a new brief um, in a future assessment series that they would have to do that for. So hopefully that's answered that for you. Um, so those are the main sort of big changes in terms of assessment, particularly around the internally assessed uh, components there. Um, the other rule that uh, was from DFE around assessment is that the external assessment um, had to be the terminal assessment. Um, now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what that means, but um, it does mean that the external assessment has to be the last thing that they sat um, before the um, certification is claimed. Um, so that does mean that they could sit an internally assessed component um, in the same series as the external assessment as well. So they could do for example, component two in the May June series of year 11, as well as doing component three in that series as well. Um, now, there is again one assessment series uh, uh, per academic year for the external assessment. So that does mean pretty much that uh, learners will have to complete that in the May June series of year 11. Now there is one reset opportunity allowed for the external assessment, um, but obviously in terms of way that works with the tech award, um, that is looking 
like for the music qualification anyway, that would have to be the next summer academic year when they could, would have that opportunity to do that. Um, and then the other thing to note is that the first attempt, the first certification of that, um, of the qualification would count towards your uh, school's performance measures. Um, so in terms of differences in awarding as well, um, again, there's some bonuses, I think here. Um, so grey boundaries um, will be issued for each assessment series for components. So there will be grade boundaries issued for um, all the internal uh, components in each series and as well as the uh, external assessment. Um, you get raw marks for each of the components, um, which then through that awarding of each series converts to a number of points, um, which gives the grade for that uh, component. Those points add up to give the and then fit into the boundaries for the overall qualification grade as well. Um, the good thing um, about this, the new tech award in terms of this, is there are no must pass components. Um, it is fully compensatory in that way. So you uh, will take all of the points um, that they achieve across the components, add them up to get the overall qualification grade. Um, and as I said, the change there um, is the ex that external assessment um, is terminal assessment, and that's a requirement there. So you can um, uh, potentially have that one assessment opportunity um, in that following academic year, but um, think about how the qualification is used generally um, it is likely just to have that one sitting for the external assessment in that year 11. Um, I've, I think that covers the main content uh, of this uh, and highlights the main differences and how that content maps across. Um, I've included lots of useful links here on the uh, slides. Um, and uh, that's uh, there's a quick guide to quality assurance. That's a new document that's come out um, recently and um, which gives a very quick overview of uh, the quality assurance process and the changes there for the new tech award. There's a brand new centre guide for quality assurance for the new tech award as well. Um, so have a look at those uh, two documents um, and it will actually show how much cut down of paperwork there is with this new tech award because of these changes um, that are in place there as well. There's also links to the sample assessment material um, for the external assessment um, and the what will be known as Pearson set assignments um, for the internally assessed components as well. So there's sample briefs uh, for those as well. And then just a link to the specification as well um, there. Um, there's uh, my contact details, um, which uh, there's the contact form. Uh, you can email me on teachingmusic at pearson.com, uh, the phone number. There's a link there to the uh, Pearson Music community um, page, which is where I will post the um, recording of this session and the slides as well. Um, and there's uh, my Twitter um, address as well. Um, when do I think the schemes work and delivery guides will be available? Um, I did speak to a colleague yesterday um, about it. Um, I'm sure it was yesterday, not today. Um, and uh, he's uh, got the drafts through. It's go currently going through a re review stage, um, so they should be online very soon. I'm afraid I don't have a, an exact date, um, but it will be this term um, sometime. Um, I, I just don't have that exact date as, as yet. So those 
they are going through some final checks um, before they're published online. Um, so um, now is an opportunity to ask any questions that you do have. Um, what I will do as well is um, just post a link to the Pearson uh, Music Community page in the chat as well. Um, so you can copy that and go to that page. Um, I suggest you uh, just join the group as well, because um, I think you will then get alerts of uh, new material being added to it as well. So that can be really useful. Uh, I do post like the recordings and slides of sessions there quite often. Um, there's a link there. Um, so please do at this point um, ask any questions, type them in the chat box. Um, I'm more than happy to go through anything. Um, and uh, yeah, if you uh, want to you know, leave, um, that's absolutely fine as well now. I've gone through uh, all the material that I, I plan to. Um, it is just a case of um, uh, answering any questions now um, uh, that you do have. Um, so are all the components moderated? Um, the two internally assessed components are moderated. The external assessment um, will be examined as such. So uh, you will submit all your um, learners work for the external assessment, whereas with the internal uh, components, um, you will submit a sample for that. Um, just seeing if there's any more questions coming in. Um, give it a little bit of time to, to let people type. Um, also, just to mention that uh, on the 10th, so what's that? Tuesday next week. Um, there is a Getting Ready to Teach event um, for the new Tech Award uh, in Music Practice as well. Um, that is a place that can be booked. I don't know if it's fully booked yet. Um, on the uh, Training from Pearson page um, on the website. Uh, and I will just very quickly pop a link in to that page as well. If you filter by uh, keyword music, um, you should be able to find that event and be able to book on um, if there are places available. Um, so uh, someone's asked what resources do you think are crucial in completing this qualification in terms of tech and composition software? Um, so we do on on the current uh, version. Uh, we do have um, people uh, centres completing it um, using um, various different bits of software. Lots of free software are being used now. Obviously, um, as we you know had lockdown and uh, centre closures, lots of centres did move to um, more. Uh, browser based doors and things like that. Um, so we do have uh, centers that are using things like Soundtrap and BandLab. Um, there's obviously freeware software out there that can be um, used as well. So things like there's great um, free version of uh, Persona Studio One, which is a, a, a door um, that can be used, but there's various other other ones out there. Um, and in terms of notation software as well, um, obviously there's freeware versions of different notation software. Um, so we're not looking for, um, you know, you having to invest heavily 
Um, obviously, um, with certain aspects and depending on your approach, it might be needed that each learner has their own workstation. Um, but um, that may not be the case if you're going down more of a performance route. But to uh, have some experience of the production side, certainly when they're covering that learning outcome A, um, having some practical engagement with production, even though that may not be the route that they choose to go down, gives them that experience and the knowledge to be able to um, talk about that and use examples that they've practically done um, rather than i mean they can use pre-existing clips as, as the examples that they're using in that as well um but obviously it's it's got that value um if they are practically engaged with that um and how many genres will i complete in the new btech component one um so in terms of that for assessment learners uh, need to show an understanding of at least uh, of four different genre styles genres um, in the assessment but in terms of delivery it's at least five um, with the requirement of it being I'm trying to remember without the spec open in front of me it's uh, like two of the pop genres it might be three of the pop genres and then at least two of the others um, I can't remember which way around that requirement is um, in terms of the teaching and learning content um, but obviously it it can be beneficial to cover more styles over time with that as well um, to give learners that breadth of knowledge of different styles someone said three from pop two from other styles so yeah Um, hopefully that's answered your question there. Uh, I don't know if there are any other questions coming in. Um, I'll hang on for a minute, um, but uh, if there aren't any more questions, I hope you found this uh, session useful. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the recording and slides will be available in the next few days. Um, so uh, please go and access those on the Pearson Music Community page um, and uh, I hope you have a pleasant evening. <laughs>